Welcome back. Uh, just before we went for our break, we uh, were trying to answer this question, what would cause a teacher to have uh, an impact on young uh, young person's life? So we had some answers. Thank you. Anyone else wants to answer or share your thoughts? Okay, if not, uh, I'll just present four probable uh, things that, uh, you know, a teacher can have impact on a young person's life. The first one is that uh, he or she is well prepared and employs effective methods and uh, triggers the young one's internal motivation to challenge and uh, freedom. Okay, so uh, the first thing is that you need to be well prepared for your class. You also use effective methods, which means you are the methods that you're using in your lesson plan or your teaching is not just creative, but it's catering to the learning styles and to the eight intelligences. And also when you are preparing your lesson, you are uh, think not thinking that your audience uh, can will, will just of course, they take in everything that you tell them because they're childlike in their faith, in their understanding. They just, you know, receive everything, take it as truth. But also you are, uh, you know, teaching them as, uh, as ones who are intelligent beings, you know, so that you can uh, motivate them uh, by throwing different challenges. And also you are giving them the freedom uh, to, uh, you know, to... Uh, uh, to work in ways that uh, will, uh, you know, uh, will help cater to their felt needs or to their challenges that they are facing. So you don't dictate to them how they are going to implement it in their own lives. Of course, you can suggest, you can give them various suggestions and share your thoughts, but give them the freedom on how they want to uh, work out you know, uh, how best they can work out or what probably suits them or what they think they can use and take and do to face that particular challenge or the difficulty that they are facing. Or you're teaching them about, uh, you know, how to overcome fear or how to overcome anger, disappointment, um, anxiety, uh, or you're basically teaching them about how to handle the blessings of God in their lives. Uh, so get them to write down how they are going to implement what they have uh, learned. Okay. The second thing is that, uh, you know, when a teacher, he or she, uh, treats the young ones as competent and intelligent individuals uh, who respond appropriately. Okay, so when you're teaching children, you're teaching them, uh, teaching uh, minds, so you're teaching lives that are competent, you know, competent to understand, competent to perceive, to, uh, you know, they're capable, they're skilled uh, uh, to. Uh, receive what you are telling them and they're also intelligent individuals you know not that hey they are dumb you can just tell them whatever you want you know or they are they don't know anything so I can just throw anything at them and they will just take it uh, no but you need to treat them as competent and intelligent individuals when you think about them in that mindset then you prepare better you're well equipped you uh, uh, are more prepared for your class rather than taking it very lightly and also so that you know that they are uh, competent and intelligent children who respond appropriately to what you are telling them so look for uh, responses okay uh, how they would respond what they would do what they think what uh, they imagine you know what they sh the person should have done shouldn't have done so all of those things uh, you know look for appropriate responses the third thing that um, a teacher can do to impact a young person's life is um, like you know she or he he or she is loving godly you know they're concerned for the young one they're willing and eager to share their life with them 
okay so just like um, uh, divya was saying you know just be loving caring show compassion uh, speak kind words declare positive things over their lives you know also that the person is godly you yourself are you know uh, moving in god's ways uh, you know empowered by the spirit you are in living in constant intimacy with god and also that you show concern for the young ones you know children can easily uh, see when you are teaching them just out of uh, responsibility or you're teaching them because you're concerned about them so for example how can we show concern to children teaching a class how can you show concern to the children taking care of individual differences for instance, if a kid has got some issue, do not just brush it off. Just try to sh show that you're concerned. Because at times, kids never mind about how much we know until they know how much we care and love them. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you know, if you've uh, noticed something that is really disturbing a child, you know, um, uh, don't just cover it, you know, or leave it out, son, but, you know, um, uh, talk about it, uh, you know, uh, uh, show that you're concerned by, you know, discussing with them, asking them what really is the issue and how you can help. What else? Having the passion for, uh, you know, what, uh, what your purpose uh, in teaching them is like if at all we are teaching a biblical concept uh, if we teach them just for the sake of uh, finishing that uh, then it may not impact them but teach them so that uh, uh, for, uh, with the with the desire that uh, they will understand and they can be uh, able they will be able to apply it in their lives so having that passion is important i think Yes, when children, uh, when the teachers take the necessary steps to do all the object lessons, skate and the story and the PowerPoint and, you know, game and all of those things, they would, they would see your interest in, in, in teaching them, in uh, inculcating those godly values, uh, the, the hard work that you're doing, the steps that you are uh, taking. Okay. Anything else? Uh I think to have a personal touch with them, like, like I think in my classes, like during the time we have like a little break, like maybe share the snacks and like before 10 minutes before the end, I ask them how was the week and what's happening uh, at home and uh, make sure that uh, you're appreciating them uh, for what they have achieved through the week, if they got any good marks and also uh, if they are going through anything, that's how you know, like, if you spend most of the time teaching and you don't have a personal touch, I don't think that's that's why we are there. Like I think we should have that. Uh, like and the children are very open. Sometimes we see them sharing. Uh, we may think they might not share, but they are very open and they say, "This is what happening. This is what I'm going through, and all this." And uh, those kind of personal touch, uh, we should try to build that bond and make sure that we are not. They feel that safe. Uh, safety with uh, safe with us they feel that we are not judging but we are always there to help and also uh, sharing uh, our life stories might help like when we were in that age what they did and how that helped us might also create a uh, show them that we are really concerned about their life yes thank you uh, Japina I think uh, you know uh, not just speaking down at them, but speaking at their level at times, you know. Uh, for example, saying that, hey, I when I was in school, I did this, you know. I uh, Maybe you cheated in a test, you used a bad word, you fought with somebody or you failed or, you know, you didn't do well and how, you know, why, what happened, how you went through that whole process, how God helped you, you know, actually uh, get children to say, hey, there is someone here who uh, is not, you know, teaching down on us or telling us what we should do and not do and does not understand us, but has been in our, 
uh, in uh, you know has gone through what we are going through understands us and so maybe I can open up I can um, I can uh, share okay so that is also showing concern concern is also you know basically praying for them you know when you pray for them God actually reveals things about them that uh, you know he wants to be addressed that uh, they're going through and then when you just quietly call them and say you know I've been praying for you and you know God is um, uh, just you know uh, uh, you know kind of stirred my heart to, towards you for this reason for uh, this area is there anything that I can say or help you and they will be shocked and amazed because you know God is basically interested in that area of their life their struggles their challenges they know so yeah there you know uh, that shows that they, you are really concerned I've had many children who you know uh, uh, their parents have come to me and said hey you know he or she did this this and then I spoke into them and they said, you know, we'll share it with you, but we don't want you to, uh, you know, share it with uh, 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 our parents. So I said, yeah, I'll do that. You know, and I've kept my word. I've not shared it with the parents. And, you know, they have opened up. They have told me what they really uh, went through, what why they did what they did. Now those children have all grown up. They're in, in adult church, you know. Uh, they're all part of various volunteer teams, still have a good relationship with them. It's because, you know, they have seen that uh, you're genuinely concerned about them. It's not that you want to punish them or, uh, you know, condemn them, but you're genuinely interested in helping them uh, to overcome those challenges and their difficulties and you really uh, care, okay? Also, um, eager to share their life with them, share your life, what you have gone through. Um, uh, yeah, you know, and uh, uh, that will be a great learning experience for them. Uh, children have told me, you know, they learn better not through the concepts that we teach them, but when we have given them practical life examples, like for my own life, or when I've spoken something that I've read from the newspaper, something that has happened, some celebrities' lives, some sports star life, what they did, how they went through this, and you know, what they should have done differently, and all of those things. Those things really uh, impact their uh, lives. Divya says, remembering their birthdays and wishing them, yes. Uh, also, if, you know, they look very sad, disappointed in class, you can ask them later on, pray with them. If they don't come a week uh, to class, you don't see them, call up, find out. You know, all that shows that you really uh, care and that they are part of the family and they're not just your teacher who you meet, you know, every uh, Sunday, okay? Um the next one is, the fourth one is, he or she is uh, interested in not just teaching biblical truths, but also concerned with the overall development of the children, okay? Uh, so you are, you are not just teaching them the biblical truths like the way we were saying, but you're basically concerned of their overall uh, development, the holistic development of the uh, child, okay? So when a teacher uh, you know, uh, uses excellent teaching methods combined with a deep, genuine concern for the young ones, you know, the children will find it extremely difficult not to learn or they'll find it extremely difficult not to connect with you. They'll find it extremely difficult not to enjoy your uh, class. They'll basically enjoy your class, they will learn, and they will just be so much part of you. Okay, any questions so far? Any questions? Okay. Yes, Divya. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I was just uh, thinking about how uh, in these situations we can involve the parents also, right? Because when, when teachers uh, uh, have an impact, uh, uh, do you think it's important even for the parents to be involved and or how how that can be done yes i think it's very important to keep uh, the the parent involved because basically when you want to have a holistic development you can't just have it in isolation with the child because a child is spending most of their time in school and at home and the parents know what's happening in school they know what is happening at home so that's why when we were uh, uh, when i was uh, 
doing the uh, you know the biblical mandate for the children's ministry i said mentoring you know talked about mentoring how important mentoring is you know and mentoring can be done only uh, not with the child but also engaging and involving the uh, parents so i was saying that how we do mentoring at uh, children's church at apc is i used to tell the children's church ministers you know they basically teach two sundays alternate sundays in a month and i said the other alternate sundays when you ad uh, attend adult church you know make it a point to just meet your uh, children who you are mentoring in your class meet the parent tell them that you are their teacher that you're praying for the child is there anything that you know the challenges the child is going through any difficulties that you can pray for or help the child and all that and then i'll show them of your of their of the confidentiality of you uh, you know keeping things confident um, uh, or confidential in what they are going to say and all that and uh, yeah you can um, you will see that they will share because you're basically interested in um, their children and you're helping them out in uh, parenting their children and so yes it's important to keep the parents also in the loop yeah but uh, sometimes when the, uh, children uh, say specific things mention specific things uh, you know um, that they don't want to be that the parents should not be informed or don't tell anybody else then you keep it confidential yeah okay thank you thank you Yes, anything else? Thank you, Divya. Any questions, any queries, doubts? Anything you'd like to add, say? Um, I would like to ask a question. Uh, so when we reach out to the villages, then maybe everywhere it happens, but uh, like when the parents are being little strict or abusive or uh, like or anger or i mean if the child is suffering silently like how do you help them to develop in that area like do you go and speak with the parents or counsel them or uh, i i am just imagining because I, i've seen uh, my classmates like in, when i was at school uh, like many they didn't have a very good uh, like parents they were very uh, and then how they beat and for the marks and <laughs> all those things and uh, there were girls were being treated differently sometimes and boys were treated differently they don't like their parents and all this so if if a child comes and approach you uh, in those issues what are the steps you would tell them to do or uh, what how do you actually have it yes very good question a uh, very important question as well uh Anyone would like to share your thoughts on what Jafina shared? If children are going through abuse, verbal, physical, sexual abuse at home, you know, and you know about it, the child, uh, you know, uh, tells you, shares with you, how can you help the child? Uh, according to me, I think we can be confidential on, we should learn how to separate majors and minors. We cannot uh, keep quiet on something my, major like that. Uh, if there is any criminality involved, I think it is okay to break the confidential seal so see to it that the kid is being helped because otherwise you will become an accomplice if you could do keep quiet when you hear such a thing. I put from there. Yes, thank you, Lubega. I wanted to actually add that in the previous thing that I said, that the child will say, keep things confidential, but there are some things that cannot be kept confidential, has to be addressed, has to be catered, the need has to be met, and you can't just overlook it and keep quiet. You need to do something about it, then yes, you'll have to uh, tell the child that, you know, if you keep it, if you keep quiet you don't do anything you continue to suffer so is it okay if i do this 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 you know this is just for your help this is for your benefit um, and we'll see how things uh, go of course the child will need counseling but uh, yes we will need to speak to the parent maybe if one parent is being very abusive maybe you can speak to the uh, the other parent you know how the other parent can help 
or if you know anyone in the family who can step in and help grandparents you can reach out to them as well anything else how we can have the child yeah um, one thing uh, as you said uh, if there is a, like a, another guardian for the child within the family uh, who who understands and who's able to have a better um, you know uh, who's able to better help the the child um, it will be a good way to connect with the parents rather than an outsider uh, so yeah uh, that was something that I was thinking. Um, and also, uh, yeah, uh, uh, helping the child with the right kind of counseling um, might help. Yes. Also, it would be good to have parent-teacher meeting or, you know, uh, parenting uh, sessions. So during the parent-teacher meeting, you can talk about some of address some of these issues you know you can say our children are going through these things at home so you can address some of those issues and help parents how they can so they know hey you know we know what is the uh, the, the children's church pastor the ministers know so they'll be a little more careful and they can also get the needed help. You can tell that you can share. Somebody can speak on those. Uh, count, a trained counselor, you know, can speak on those issues. How they can uh, get the needed help. What, what is causing them to react like that? To treat their children like that? And also, if they need uh, additional help, they can always uh, reach out to uh, to the counselor uh, at church or anyone. So you can uh, open up things so parents know and aware and also show how it's impacting children you can talk about general case histories that have happened in the past and how it's affected uh, them uh, uh, children who have had abusive parents how it's affected them as adults and look at this adult how he's living his life how he's struggling and maybe the parents themselves have been victims of uh, abuse and now it's kind of becoming a pattern in them and they are uh, doing the same thing for their children you know um, or if they have unfulfilled dreams they're trying to live it out to their children and how so all of these things can be spoken of so parents are uh, more uh, aware so you can have uh, parent teacher sessions uh, parenting sessions you know and you can just address uh, these various issues which will really uh, help yeah Anything else? Anyone else likes to add? Also, if there are sometimes, you know, when children are going through uh, case, uh, I mean, things like this, and they come and tell you and say, hey, you know, uh, my child is, uh, or you're having a problem, this child is con it's a nice child. You know, I had this issue with one of our uh, children in, in children's church, a very nice child, a very sweet, loving child, but, you know, beating up another child. And this, he was basically beating up another child who was a special child. You know, they were good friends, both of them. They sit together. He's very caring of, of her, very loving and all of those things. But, you know, um, uh, he's, I think when he gets angry about something, he just beats her up. You know, and uh, she does not, she's not told me as a, uh, or the teacher, she goes back and tells the, the mother. So the mother's come and it happened twice or twice, the mother's come and told me. So then uh, I had to address that with the child. And because he was a very small child, I also had to address it with the parents. And the parents were very upset. And immediately the, the parent just hit the child in front of me, you know. So then I was, uh, I also know how the parent reacts, how the parent is treating uh, his wife at home. So I uh, says, you know, and the parent came back after a few months and told me the child is doing the same thing in school. There has been reports where he's beating up other children. So then I, I said, see, a child can, and I know the whole history because I saw that the father immediately 
slapped him in front of me. Uh, the mother was very, very upset. Uh, I also know that when he gets angry, the father beats up the mother and the child is seeing that. So I had to address it with the parents, but I didn't know, I can't say it directly because I've, I know for a fact and I know it's true and I've heard, but how do I address it? So I just had to tell the father, see, the child is doing it because the child is learning from somewhere. He's either watching, I started with either watching movies where there is a lot of violence, so he's playing games, but there's a lot of violence. He's uh, uh, looking at cartoons where there is violence, so, you know, that is triggering off because he's a very nice child, he's a very loving child, and he just can't go around beating others. It's not normal for this child to do that. It's because he's learning it, he's picking it up from uh, somewhere, or he's basically observing things, you know, either at home, I, I, I mentioned that, he's observing things either at home or he's observing things in the family, extended family. You know, so that got the parent really thinking, yeah, that's not the fault of my child. It's something that has to do with us because I'm behaving that way. So, you know, so sometimes you need to say things, you need the wisdom of God, you know, to say it in a very, son. but yeah, you know, call a spade a spade. You know, have to point out the things and, and say things, yes, you have to do it sometimes. Yes, any other Yeah, I would just like to ask a few questions. So uh, I think once uh, when I went to the interior parts of Madhra and, and I met child laborers over there, and uh, I, I'm just asking, like, how do you think what we should do when we get, uh, when we meet child, children like that? And uh, I think their, their life and their lifestyle is so very different from uh, what we think the other children go through. And some they work and they go to school and some they don't go to school and how as ministers of God like what we can do for them and how we can what are the teachings we should give them I'm just I'm just wondering about all this because the environment changes like it's not not more like they are in school they are they are in workplaces they are sometimes they are abused or sometimes uh, they work too much don't get wages and all this and also about what if you come to know as a child is suicidal uh, how do you handle that case yeah, just some case studies <laughs> yes thank you jeffina jeffina works with uh, more of uh, uh, the rural kids and so i think she engages with with these kind of kids so any thoughts on how you can help children who are child laborers um, how to, you know, what to teach them, what to, narratives, stories, how to minister to them. Any thoughts? I would say basically talk about the love of God. You know, how Jesus was loving, prodigal son, Jairus' daughter, you know, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, showing love to the children, even though the disciples didn't think they were important. Uh, various narratives and how the widow woman, her son was dead, and, you know, Elijah's story and all of those things. So that he cares for the little children he sees, he loves them. Talk about their identity of who they are in, in Christ, you know. Um, uh, that God still loves them, he cares for them, how he is a provider. Talk about stories in the Bible about uh, God's provision, his love, his care, his compassion. He's a God who heals, a God of miracles, how he can do work miracles for them, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, talk about a God of justice, that he's a God who's just, he'll bring about uh, justice and fairness, even in their situations, is a lot of righteousness. He does what is right as well, you know. So all of these narratives can really build them into a, a relationship with God, and they can just depend on Him, and they can see Him working through in their uh, lives. And also talk to them that this is not what God has planned for them. 
you know, poverty is not what God had planned for them. You know, being child laborers is not God, what God has planned for them. God is not a partial God. He treats everyone uh, the same. Uh, but how they can, you know, uh, speak and decree God's promises and get themselves out of that uh, situation. You know, you can, that is uh, what you can do. Yes. Anyone else wants to add? All of you in class? Yes, no. These are some relevant things that we can, even if you're a pastor, you can still add and tell us how you can help. What if, um, uh, of, if, if parents come to you as pastors, uh, children's church teachers, ministers, and uh, you know, their child is suicidal? You know a child is suicidal. How can you help the child? So it can be like uh, counseling, but you know, there is no formula which is uh, concrete. But I think we can show them that uh, through counseling and guidance and reading for them some lines in the Bible to show them that uh, the, the life they have is not theirs, it is for God, and God gave them for all a purpose. So to show them that they should live and they should do nothing about their life, a whole we would find the reasons why they think that they, they are, why they want to be suicidal, and we try to find a solution for that. Yes, thank you, Lubega. Uh, yes, they need counseling. Uh, they need, uh, you know, help in uh, topics that you can teach them. It's about uh, God has a calling and a purpose for them. God has a plan. He's created them for a specific purpose. Uh, he has plans to prosper them, not to harm them. It has a good future for them. So all of these can be something that you can teach them on. And also, yes, you can bind the spirits that are working against them, tormenting oppressive, depressive spirits that are torment, tormenting their minds. Um, also, you can talk about, just declare that they are the mind of Christ, speak declarations, give them decrees and declarations that they can speak over their lives. And when they feel uh, suicidal, they can, you know, just call you or they can just come. Give them some support adults, you know, some adult they can support, they can receive support from who, who is there, who can watch over them, uh, someone they are accountable to, which will really help. Yeah. Thank you, Lubega. OK, uh, we'll move on. OK, uh, thank you, Jeffina, for your uh, good questions. What is thinking? Yes. Uh, so I, I began uh, the class by saying, you know, that uh, calling of a teacher is a divine call okay those who minister in children's church or sunday school you know they have an it's an important call and they have an important role uh, according to ephesians chapter 4 uh, verses 11 and 12 okay uh, look at what ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 says can somebody read that please on the screen so anyone can read it please Ephesians 4 11 and 12 it was it was he who prophets. <laughs> go ahead some to be evangelists and some to be pastors to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up Amen. So here we see that, you know, the ministry offices uh, that is appointed by God himself. So we have the membership gifts, we have the, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, and we also have the ministry offices, specific ministry offices uh, that is appointed by Christ himself. And Christ appoints some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and one of the five uh, ministry offices is that of a teacher. Okay, so it is not just a just a simple calling. It's a divine calling. It's something that you know you're called into this position as a teacher. It's a divine appointment by Christ Himself. 
Okay, so that is very, very important to keep at the back of our minds because to know that, hey, I'm called into this specific ministry office by God himself and I'm accountable to him for the sheep that he has entrusted uh, to me. I am a shepherd and I'm accountable to the sheep that he's entrusted to me. So, you know, even as I was um, ministering in children's church, um, I always had this in the back of my mind that God is going to hold me accountable to the lives that he has entrusted uh, to me. So what am I doing to, you know, spirit, the spiritual upbringing? You know, am I just being complacent, just going with what I have done before or thinking, waiting on the Lord, uh, you know, to see the next steps he wants me to take and how to move them forward in the things of God. So all those are very, very um, important because teaching is a ministry office and we're appointed by Christ himself. Uh, you know, um, was Jesus a teacher? 150%. <laughs> One hundred and fifty-five percent. Okay, yes, Jesus was uh, one of the greatest teachers. Uh, was he a teacher or a preacher? Was he more a teacher or a preacher? What do you all think? Was he more a teacher or a preacher? One hundred percent a preacher. He was the all round. He was a preacher, a doctor, a what? Everything is a hundred percent. Okay, he was uh, a preacher and a teacher, yes, but uh, most of the time, uh, which role did he? Most of the time. I'm, I'm inclined to say that he was more of a teacher. Yes, right. Thank you, Lupega. Thank you, Jeffina, as well. Yes, most of the time he was more inclined towards teaching. He was more a teacher, you know, uh, and he magnified the work of a uh, teacher. He was both a preacher and a teacher, but he was referred to uh, as a teacher more than a, a preacher. Okay, Divya says he was a professor and a coach. Okay, thank you. What is the task of a, uh, we look at what is the task of a teacher and a preacher, but before we look at the task of a teacher, what is the task of a preacher? What is the task of a preacher? Anyone? What is the job assignment of a of a preacher? The answer is in Second Timothy chapter four, verse two. <laughs> the answer is in Second Timothy chapter four, verse two. What is the task of a preacher? So all of you quickly look up Second Timothy chapter four, verse two, and let me know what's the answer. To convince, to rebuke, and to exhort. Thank you, John Paul. Yes, it's to convince, to rebuke, to exhort uh, with all long suffering and teaching. There's no slide on that. To convince, to exhort, to uh, re uh, rebuke, to reprove. Okay. Uh, what is the meaning? So, the task of a preacher is basically to exhort, basically to press, push. Uh, and insist on a specific point uh, uh, and his job or her job is also to reprove which means to take to task to rebuke uh, some of the things that uh, you know a lifestyle sin that is you know um, that is not pleasing in the Lord's sight and also it is to um, you know uh, rebuke and to press home a point so that it is acted upon by the people who hear okay so the task of a preacher is basically to convince rebuke sort reprove and uh, do it with a lot of patience long suffering okay long suffering and teaching a lot of patience and to continually um, teach okay so that is the task of a, a preacher what do you think is the task of a teacher What do you think is the task of a teacher? The task of a teacher is to inculcate knowledge 
values, skills, and attitudes from one from one side to the other. Okay, thank you, Lubega. Anyone else? Okay, uh, helping kids apply the truths they learn and guide them. Okay, thank you. Yes. So teacher's primary task is to instruct, okay? Instruct means basically to teach, to train, to coach, and to tutor, okay? So you're there to teach, to train, to be a coach, to become alongside them, coaching them, training them, and to be a tutor, okay? Also, a teacher teaches facts, not just teaches the facts, but, you know, simplifies the facts or simplifies the truths. And then just do, doesn't just leave those facts and truths uh, by just stating it, but uh, looks to various means to illustrate those facts, to illustrate those truths, okay? And also a how in ways they can uh, uh, the the person that the, the audience that you're teaching to how they can apply the truth okay and um, they look for response okay they look for response so it's basically um, to instruct how to teach train coach and tutor how to teach the facts simplify those facts and those truths they look to ways and means how they can illustrate it and also look at ways and uh, how to help to apply the truth, apply those facts, you know, and uh, they look back for a response. So it's a whole complete uh, package, okay? Of course, when you, when you preach, you are also talking about how to apply it and how they can respond, but you're not coming back and asking them, hey, how did you respond uh, to my message the next uh, Sunday? But as a teacher, you know, uh, you can illustrate those with various activities, games, object lessons, uh, attention getters, and also look at how you, you can help them to apply the truth, like Divya mentioned, and also look for response. Very, very important, okay? Uh, but some of the teachers, what they do is they basically uh, do a good role of instructing the children. They also may come to a good role of where they can, you know, simplify the uh, truth, teach the truth. But what they fail to do most often is how they can illustrate those truths, those concepts, how they can help the uh, the audience to apply the truth and also they fail to look at the response how you know the children have applied they don't come back next week and do a recap and say how did you you know act on what we had studied last week or what we uh, learned yes Lyndon yes Lyndon you have your hand up you have you can unmute your mic and ask Okay. Lyndon, are you there? Put your hand up. You have any question? Okay, we'll move on. Okay. So that is the basic, uh, you know, uh, task of a teacher. So we look at the task of a preacher and a teacher. And we see Jesus being more of a teacher because he basically teaches, trains, you know, coaches. Then he's talking about uh, uh, the facts, the truths. He simplifies the facts and truths. He also illustrates. It says, look at the bird of the air, the lily of the field, the mountain, you know, uh, and all of those examples. The sower went to sow a seed. He talks about parables. And then he uh, uh, helps them to apply the truth. And then he also looks for uh, response. Okay. So we also, uh, it's important that the teacher gives students the opportunity for questions and uh, discussion. Uh, to be sure that the truth has been understood, okay? So give time uh, for them to talk about what they have learned, uh, ask questions so that you can know what 
whether they have picked up the concepts, the truth in the right way, in the right sense, and, uh, uh, you know, or have discussions to, uh, to ensure that the truth has been understood well and also help them to apply the truth and look for a response. Okay. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll move on to uh, uh, what is the qualifications of a teacher. Okay. So even as we've seen that uh, the role of a teacher is part of the fivefold ministry offices, ministry office um, uh, in the body of Christ, and it's appointed by Christ himself. So we just can't pick up anyone and everyone uh, in the to be a teacher. We basically need to pray and ask God to show us. You know, I do that. You know, when I'm I'm looking for teachers for our children's church, I ask God to, I pray and ask God to show me faces or names in that congregation who I can approach. And I, I ask God if it's uh, his will then, you know, to speak to them as well. So I go and then, uh, you know, he gives, shows me sometimes faces, gives me names or somebody, you know, recommends them and I pray about it and then I sense God moving me towards them, then I go and speak to them, but I tell them, hey, take some time to, this is our requirement, this is the roles and responsibilities, and then I tell them to take some time to pray about it, and if they sense a leading from God to uh, come back and let me uh, know, okay? So uh, what is the qualifications of a teacher, okay? Or we looked at messenger and methods, uh, you know, uh, who is, uh, uh, what a messenger must be. Okay, the first thing a messenger must be uh, someone who's growing and maturing in their walk with God. Okay, um, so you know, even as you are a teacher, you need to grow and mature in your walk with God, grow in your understanding of God's word, grow stronger in your prayer life, be mature and deeper, get um, mature and deeper into the things of God. Because if you are not uh, growing in your understanding of God or your revelation of God, if you're very stagnant, you know, you know what happens to stagnant pools, they just breed all kind of insects and it's dirty water and it's not good for health uh, and we don't have anything new to share with the uh, kids. So it's important that, uh, you know, we grow and mature in our walk with uh, God. So if, if one has to teach, then, you know, they must be faithful students of the word, okay? And uh, we all know that we have the greatest uh, infallible, that is the perfect, dependable, dependable, flawless teacher who is the, who is the greatest infallible teacher? Jesus, okay, the Holy Spirit. Um, and he's the one who will teach us and uh, help us to understand the truths in God's word and how we can communicate this to the uh, children. Yes, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we need to spend time. And like uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Paul is writing uh, to Timothy and he's saying, you know, hey, Timothy, uh, you know, uh, uh, study to show yourself approved unto God rightly dividing the word of truth. So he's saying, you know, you have to preach and teach only the word of God, only the doctrines of the word of God. But even as you do it, you know, take time to study. Take time to study so that you can show yourself as one approved unto God who's rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. We want, we we'll look at um, uh, the next three points next class. Uh, next class may be the last class. In case I don't finish, I can, I'll can. i just take one more class in the month of March, but maybe next class, the last class. But anyone has any questions? Anyone has any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then uh, I'd like to schedule the first assessment. We're going to have two assessments for children's ministry. So uh, lesson one and lesson two, which is biblical mandate for children's ministry and developmental needs of uh, children. Uh, so when can I post the assessment? Any, any possible date can you all give me, please? Tomorrow? 
is Thursday okay or Friday okay and then you can have three or four days to do it? Three days maybe, is that okay? Can I post it on Thursday or Friday? Yeah, we can cut and work for me this side. Okay, Divya says okay, Roslyn is okay, John Paul says okay. Okay, so I'll post it on, uh, should I post it on Thursday or Friday, which is better? The due date is the one we have to mind about. When you post on Thursday, what is, when is the due date? Okay, when I post it on Thursday, which is the 22nd, I'll give you time till the 26th, which is Monday. If I post it on 23rd, I'll give you time till 27th. So second, like, you know, op second option, Friday. Is that okay with everybody? 23rd? Okay, two people are saying Thursday. Roslyn is saying Thursday as well. Only one person on Friday. What about the others? We, we go by Thursday, ma'am. Okay, fine. Okay. Thank you, everyone, uh, for attending class. I'll post it on Thursday. Uh, maybe I can give you time till 26th or 27th for those of you who have busy weekends as pastors and you need uh, Monday to kind of relax your mind, can give you even Tuesday. That's not a problem. Okay, thank you. Um, everyone, have a blessed day.